Ignore Conservative voters at your peril. That's the warning from former Prime Minister Tony Abbott in the wake of Donald Trump's election. Political reporter Matthew Doran has more. The pundits were wrong. The Trump phenomenon capturing a disillusioned middle class. We're going to replace our failed and corrupt establishment. I think this is something that mainstream politicians ignore at their peril. One former leader says the reality TV star and business mogul's election should serve as a wake-up call on this side of the Pacific. When people's concerns are dismissed um, as... Uh, uh, just the sorts of worries of a bunch of deplorables, you can understand why they get very, very unhappy. The notion some Australians are feeling disconnected from the major parties is clear from results at the ballot box. Throughout the political churn of the Rudd, Gillard, Rudd, Abbott, Turnbull years, the percentage of first party lower house votes going to the Coalition and Labor has dipped. Voters more readily looking elsewhere for leadership. But the Australian political establishment are keen to spruik their community credentials. In the National Party, we're doing our job. And we do it not by sort of giving lectures from the, from the, from the, from the hill. We just get out and get around and say good day to people. Tony Abbott says the man who ousted him is on the right track to stop the rot. Less talk about innovation, more talk about immigration. So what you've seen from Malcolm Turnbull post-election uh, is a much more orthodox centre-right leader. The opposition maintains it's all about economic mismanagement. But the middle class are under pressure. This government needs to focus on jobs, 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 and they should stop fighting each other. Words we've heard before. In some very, very powerful words. Jobs, jobs, jobs. The Prime Minister suggested if there has been any voter disillusionment of late, maybe his predecessor, Tony Abbott's 2014 budget, helped fuel that fire. Regardless of who's to blame, it's a debate we'll likely continue hearing on Capitol Hill well beyond Donald Trump's inauguration in January. Matthew Doran, ABC News, Canberra.